Well, guys, welcome back to the Bench Podcast with me, George Bennett, and obviously joined by my lovely assistants over to my left. We've got Ethan Cunningham. Assistants. Yeah, mate. I'm. You're I'm, the, I'm. I'm the young crop of this. You're like. <laughs> King, you're. You're Pep Linders and Kingy's Peter Crowitz. Right, Roy Hodgson. No, no, yeah, I know you're Roy Hodgson. Yeah, Kingy's the uh, or Scott Parker of our group. Scott Parker. Yeah. So mm. Alex King, say hello. Hello. Okay, so my well, great starts. Oh, oh so, so, so I don't need to say hello for this podcast episode. Yeah, you're, you're, you're Roy Hodgson, Ethan, you're irrelevant. So. Anyway, uh, welcome back. Um, we're going to be going through the Premier League fixtures this weekend. Um, it's been an interesting set of fixtures this weekend, obviously. We've got the Merseyside derby, which was full of controversy, and I'm, I'm very angry at that result. You mean you've had oh. you've had the Merseyside derby? It's been played, George. Yeah, that's what, that's what I meant. Yeah, and then um, obviously we have a few um, high scoring draws as well, which we'll get into throughout the throughout the podcast. And uh, yeah, it should be an interesting one. So we might as well just kick off with the Merseyside derby because oh, you, you don't want to get the the boring games out of the way first. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, you know, okay. Do a match of the day then, so we'll, we'll build up to. We'll, we'll, we'll get as you know. It's, the swap of a match today. The, the, the exciting games go first. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll, it's, we'll all about, the... it's all about watch time with YouTube, Bennett. So you need to start off with boring oh. games and then lead off to the more exciting games so the views are like just so like synced in and the start okay, to the yeah. end. So we might as well start with the most boring game of the weekend, West Brom v Burnley. It's just finished. Which was today. <laughs> uh, move on. Do you move on for that one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Great yeah, clean next sheet, one, uh, <laughs> Okay, next up on my list, hang on. Let me bring it up. We've got uh, one of the, Palace Brighton, maybe. So that was another yeah. draw. Um, so where, where are they in the table? Um, Palace well, currently, Palace at the moment. Palace 13th, yeah. And, and uh, Brighton. Brighton 16th. I don't yeah. know. I don't care. <laughs> That's how much I don't it's supposed to be some big derby, isn't it? Even though there's not really like what's the, I don't know what the rivalry is between the two because there is a rivalry. Yeah, there's more of a derby right between my Lynx Africa, my Lynx Black. Uh, You're not sponsored by Lynx, by the way. We're not sponsored by Lynx. That's that. That's not a derby. Well, it's no. Kingy. It, it's obviously a derby to um the local Those fans yeah, and but, whatever sorts of two the two teams. Why is it? What is the it's called the M23 dog, but why would you knock in dog up a motorway? Well, she knows, so it's not, it's not, it's not passionate anyway. Um, so yeah, Zaha scored his customary goal. It seems like he's um, he's still trying to play for a move away. And well, I'll, let's tail off a little bit, like, like, like we always do, lads. Well. Zaha, what do you think? <laughs> Well, do you think he's a good player or do you think he's, I don't know. Yeah, because like, it seems like every um, every transfer window, if it's January or in the summer, Sky Sports, Kim White's coming up, popping up saying, oh, Wilfred Zaha's licked him and move away. That's the best Scottish answer. Yeah, well, I think, <laughs> because, I, think, I think what it is, I think the reason why is because, I think it's because Palace obviously is, is their best player. Probably, yeah, that is. Yeah. So obviously, any any best player that hasn't moved for a while, you're probably thinking, well, it's it's probably might as well, you might as well just start talking about it because there could be a possibility he could just go, yeah, I want to play for a bigger club. Mm. And there's been times, but close, but obviously, to be fair, Palace have managed to keep him. So you've got to say it's a job well done from Palace on their terms because to keep a player of a good quality player at the team that provides and. He's always, if they're struggling, you'd always look to him to score or make is a he, goal. Is yeah. he a good quality player, though? Yeah, I think he's I'm a good player. player. He's, he's not let's, have a, let's have a quick look at his, like, um, his, his stats. You two can carry on talking. I'll, I'll look a, at um, Zaha's I think stats. Personally, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a good player. He's a, he's a good, solid player. He could probably do better under a better manager, possibly, yeah. But at the moment, I think he's a good player. He's pro, you know, he could easily probably get into... I don't know. He could probably get into someone like an Everton team, or yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's definitely. He could get into a better thing. team. He could probably get into so, someone like Wolves. Wolford Zaha. Be fair, I don't. I think Wolves. I think he'd be good at Wolves. I think he'd be good at understudy at Spurs. Maybe, maybe like a backup to Harry Kane. Maybe some someone like that. Like, like, like. Okay, just, 
I do him. I don't know. So whilst whilst he's been in the Premier League, um, his highest scoring season in all competitions is ten in thirty six appearances, and that was in the eighteen nineteen season for Crystal Palace. So he's had a lot of um, last season. He had four goals last season, but to be quite honest, he's a he's had um, a good start to the season. He's had four goals in five appearances for Crystal Palace. So do you think he'll he's obviously doing alright? He's obviously work. He's worked on his finishing, which is probably what he's... Well, the whole weak, the whole reason why he wanted to leave in the first place, because was, was, was he linked with Arsenal? Um, yeah. Last yeah. summer, was, yeah, yeah. And, and um, Everton and as well. Move. Yeah, and, and obviously... Was, was it financial reason why he didn't, he didn't join in the end, or was it because just, just Palace just held on? I don't like to just keep I think him. Palace just held on, personally. Yeah. If they held but, on, or he was just on the list of transfers that they just... I think yeah. want to go at the end. I just think it's a shame that when we signed him, that he wasn't able to play because I've David Moyes kind of ruined him, which just really pissed me off to be honest. Because he's a player that would have done well, I think, with a better manager in charge. I think if you had someone like a Vanguard in charge before Moyes, who actually let young players come in and play, I think he could have played well along with the sides of like Rashford, Martial. And he could have had a pretty good fun three there, but obviously Moyes didn't want to play him. Obviously, I reason, well, I don't know why what happened, but there were really... a signing for Man United. He was, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. He was. I think that's one of the downsides yeah. to him. Um, obviously, when Fergie left, because he kind of like, left us with like an aging squad and a squad that I know we won the league in his last season, but like looking back, that's one of the, like the worst Man United squads that I've seen, to be quite honest, because, like, the winning ones, I, I think it's one of the worst squads we've had, because we were, looking back, we were heavily carried by Van Persie. Like... Yeah, but know, we also I, had a good defence. We had, we had, we had, we had Ferdinand, Vidic, Yeah, but Evra. they're all, they're all coming towards the end of their careers. Like, yeah, the back four, or the back five, including the goalkeeper, was, was, um, was solid, but they're all coming towards the end of their careers, and I don't think one of the many mistakes that Moyes made at Man United, I think he overused um, Vidic and Ferdinand, where they should have been sparingly used. Like how he starts to see how like Matic is used now under Oli. Mm. Like, you just only use them in the bigger games when they're needed. Just, just, just in every game. We're going a little bit off topic. I think we should. Yeah, yeah. Turn to the, turn to yeah. the Man United podcast again. Yeah, let's not let's uh, not do anyway. that again. So let's yeah, just copy Brian, from the next. Ken so Brian, Brian, next Brian scored. Obviously, Alexis McAllister. He seems like a quite promising player, but we'll move on. Um, next game I've got now is. Sheffield yeah, United and Fulham. Well, we missed, we didn't miss that Villa and Leicester. Do you want to go through Villa and Leicester? Obviously, that Villa continuing their hundred percent. The only team to have hundred percent record in the Premier League still. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I was Bar- very surprised they won that. Yeah, I Ross thought Bar- Ross Barkley scored in the um, yeah, the last, last minute, minute, yeah, last minute, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. A good signing for Villa at the moment. It's a good loan signing for them. Yeah, for yeah crazy season. This is so far it just shows that Aston Villa, who are almost relegated, are now second. But, but I think they make good business. They've done good business. Well, yeah, but also, summer. I also think. How way they stayed up last season, the last four games they played, mm. they kind of built a foundation. And this, yeah, don't season, they're yeah. not they're not going to get it in Europe. top four six. They're going to struggle, but they can probably mm. build on it and push maybe for a good mid table finish. And then next season, if they buy well again, they could push for Europe. So, you know, Villa, I think, are make a going places with this, and they've obviously got a plan. They've obviously got money as well to back up their. Um, to back them up, so I think fair, mm. but I think it's, a, it's an exciting time for Villa fans, and obviously it's, it's a shame, obviously that you know, well, for any all football fans really, that we can't go and watch our teams. But I think when your team's promising and playing as well as they are, I think Villa fans would really spur them on as well at the moment. So it is a shame, but obviously you know all you can do now is, is just keep putting in performances, and, and Villa are doing well. But um, and also I'll quickly mention Leicester. Uh, Leicester have had a bit of a tough. Couple, the last couple of games after when I saw them in the first three games I thought Leicester could be top four candidates again I still think they could be this year but I think they need to start winning some games I mean to be fair this season at the moment we've obviously we'll touch on it later obviously with what the injuries Liverpool have got and obviously City as well struggling a bit 
it could be a season where at Everton or Leicester or someone like that can really spring the surprise and actually push for another title. So we all yeah. thought Leicester of 2015-16 was a fluke. Who knows? Because of this crazy, crazy with, times. With, with, with Leicester, um, at the moment, they've, they've got quite a few injury issues themselves. I mean, Swan yeah. Chews now, he's been ruled out for three months. Was it, was it, a, was it a muscle tear? or oh, I know he's out for three months for definitely, but... Um, mm. I think Ricardo Pereira is not playing as well. I think he's I'm not yeah. surprised. But to Christ, I'm not surprised. M teams getting a lot of injuries. Obviously, we took from the like Van Dyke injury. That's like a like an an, an anomaly in like this case. But I think you're going to get a lot of players who are going to fall injured. Plus, maybe becoming positive with the with um, the coronavirus as well. Because like, but with the injuries, um, like teams haven't had a pre season. Like to um to like ease into um, the league that you've yeah. gone from last season, a couple of weeks on the day, straight into it. And I, I really yeah. don't think the Premier League have um I've done it right in this case. I think they've haven't really just thought about the financial side instead of like the well being of um Well I think the reason why they had to kind of push it was because the fact that obviously the world the Euro, sorry, next year, Euros yeah. we started in June, July. And obviously the Premier League because we finished in the start of June, so they don't want they had to start it in September. Probably, but even then, maybe you could yeah. have thought could they have delayed it another couple of weeks? Maybe done a few midweek games, possibly. So it, could be, it could be a reason as well why um, pay per views coming into the Premier League at the moment. Obviously, in the news recently, we've been told that some some games are now going to be put on Sky Sports pay per view or BT pay per view. Yeah, and then, but I, I just find that ridiculous because, like, for example, a game like West Brom and Burnley, it's just happened, finished nil nil. Why would you, why would anyone want to pay for that unless you're a fan of the club? Well, you could you could argue Shocking. that, um, like, how much is an an average um game and um, game ticket to watch it live? Yeah, but the thing is, you pay you, when you're paying for a ticket to go to a live game, you, you're getting the experience of going. Obviously, so, yeah, it's it, half the price. Yeah, I mean, yeah, being part I'll of you. Part of the then, fan. Very, very few people neutral would watch West Brom Burnley because, well, it just turned. It just shows yeah, that something. It just shows that something's normal. That those two boring teams back nil nil. My argument is it. though, if you're a loyal fan, the same as like, because if if you're paying, like, let's say the average um, football ticket cost is like thirty to forty pounds. Let's let's say that say that hypothetically, you're you're paying. Half the, I'm not. I'm not saying it's right for me. I, I think the Premier League could or Sky should go the Netflix route, and you pay you pay monthly to watch them football teams, and you get so many. That's what Netflix. That's what Net TV kind of is, and that's probably what will happen in the future. Well, term it will be, be on Netflix well, or Net TV, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I I'll, I'll just pay yeah. ten pounds to watch Leeds versus Wolves. Now mm. it, it, it's um, it's not. Uh, it's my choice. I thought it's a good game. I'll pay to watch it. But yeah. if you get it through like a day pass, so you could watch other games as well. But to pay to make someone pay fifteen pounds to watch their to one watch one game, so you could argue if it's your if it's your team and your support of that team, you like you you didn't know that um that um who was it West Brom versus not West Brom um yeah West Brom Burnley was going to be a nil nil. It could have been a five five. You, you didn't know it was going to yeah, you, can, you can kind of, from the teams that, that are playing, you can kind of guess what the score will be from. Yeah, but you, you but West Brom and Burnley is not going to be a fine game, is it? Come on. You don't know. West Brom and Burnley probably never scored five goals in their fucking history. No, no. Never mind. That's scoring not true, five goals. I, I know what you're getting at, King. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, so you, they're, they're not, they're not saying saying this. Saying, you know, if you're a loyal fan, if you're a loyal fan, you 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 should um you should easily like I can't say anything because. Um, like I, I haven't paid to watch it. But if you're a loyal fan, you'd pay to watch your team for whatever price, um, whatever team that they're playing. Oh, like this is, put it like this, I'm not going to be watching Liverpool Sheffield United next week, and that's on paper. I'm not. I'm not paying for that. Well, I'm. 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 I'm prefer to I'm listen to like a radio. I'm. I'm. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just prefer to just get like on another medium, basically. I'm not Again, but that, that's your choice. So you anyway, should be blaming yeah. Sky or BT for setting the price to watch a football match because they're, yeah, not, they're not... I think it'll be changed. I think it will. I think by the end that's of the month, I'll be surprised if it's scrapped. Or, or, or yeah, it's but... rumoured to be scrapped anyway. But, but anyway, yeah. we'll move on. We'll move on. We'll um, the next game. 
We'll go on to Man City Arsenal next because well actually no 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 sorry we'll go on Sheffield United Fulham sorry mm. we'll go we'll, we'll go there first that was another one one draw um, Fulham did take the lead under um, Adamola Luckman but they ended up getting picked back by Billy Sharp penalty so well Fulham missed the penalty Mitch hit the bar I did it yeah yeah everyone was Mitch going bad on Twitter but yeah, but um, it's fancy teams. yeah. Mitrovic had a bad game, but um, but yeah, it was a it was not. I mean, from what I saw, the highlights, it's you know, okay game. I think once again, Fulham showed why they paid a good amount of money for the goalkeeper because the goalkeeper had some good saves. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They play pretty football, but ultimately, they, they, they can't seem to defend well enough to maybe do the do well, the job. No. Really. Yeah, defensively they're poor, but I think if they had if if they had a because they got a better keeper, they can be a bit more safe. Than they were probably a couple of seasons ago, but I can see this season now. Like you've got West Brom, Burnley, Brighton, Sheffield um, United, United Fulham. This season, that's the first point. They're all going to be. I mean, Brighton yeah, probably should be okay. I think Brighton probably be okay, but I think those four teams that you, we just named below, I think they're going to be scrapping it out. I don't see anyone yeah. else at the moment joining in. On that. I mean, it, it could it could happen. You could someone could just dramatically drop down, but. I don't see that happening, to be honest. I think the rest of the other two teams are too good. I'm surprised that Sheffield United are, are how that they're struggling a bit this season because I'm really not surprised. I, I mean, I mean, okay, okay. You might say second season syndrome and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, they're missing Dean Henderson, who, who was a big part of where, where they were last season. But you'd think with the money that they'd have, they may, Chris Wilder would like be able to wisely invest in that sort of like That's in those right. players. Was but he able to in, reinvest into the squad though? Well, I mean, like he spent quite a hefty fee on Rian Bruce, who's not played a single Premier League game. I mean, I, I, obviously, exactly. no, no one, no one knows what happened with him because obviously, I have high hopes for him because he he seems quite a promising player. But, That's good for <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. If he does well, if he, if he doesn't, we've gained twenty three million for nothing really. Exactly, yeah. But it's it's hit and miss. It, uh, for, for a team like Sheffield United, you, know, you need to get someone who, who will get you the goals to to keep keeping the mid table and then eventually push on for further things. Yeah. But, yeah, you got to see how things go with that sort of thing. But, mm. but anyway, we'll move on because it was very interesting. Yeah, we've got the other games to talk about. Yeah, a bit more exciting stuff. We'll go on to the big game of the Sunday. That was West Ham Tottenham. Yeah, that's really that was well, Spurs, I mean, you... I saw the first twenty minutes, twenty five minutes of that game. I turned it off. That's twenty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, well, I can't be off. But... I can't be asked to watch this anymore because it's going to be a rout and I'm already a bit murked off at Spurs after the way they battered us so I didn't really want to see another battering mm. and I was out and I saw the score and I thought that's that's good I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad they got pulled back and, uh, well and it just proves to me that uh, Spurs defensively Still not good enough. I mean, they've got two good defenders. They've got Regulon, Alderweireld's not too bad. But Davis and Sanchez, poor. Aurier, not good enough defensively. They're too, they're too attack. Like, they're they're and, full-backs. They're too attacking. And you and can't... You can't don't say, you can't really say that with a Mourinho team either. Because Mourinho's yeah. obviously known for his defensive style. But, but obviously, he seems to be going the way now. But the, we'll also, we don't know. Do Doherty, he's more attacking as well. He's not exactly. defend. So, you, can't aff- you can't afford, like, you see all the big teams that um, have two attacking fullbacks, like Liverpool, um, like Man City, um, like Bayern, for example. If you have two attacking fullbacks, you need yeah, to have a defensive, uh, or you know, you're gonna have, you have to have yeah. a defensive midfielder that's sole purpose part of the part of the team is it's just defensive. defensive. It's just yeah. like yeah. the ball recycle. exactly. Personally, what I could start seeing happening soon, I think this season, I wouldn't be surprised if Wolves or someone like that have yeah. a best, the best defensive record. And the reason why I know, they, I know they've had a bad game. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, defensively, they've got three at the back, and they've got two fullbacks. So if the fullbacks push forward, they've got mm. three to cover. So it might start being the the new way of football that you play with three centre backs and wing backs because then your wing backs can push forward and then you've got three centre backs then who can well, come round and, and fill in a bit 
So yeah, everyone, it, everyone thought that was going to happen when Conte was here. And everyone cried yeah. when Conte was here, but it kind of just died well, out. It depends if you, if you, suit, if you can suit the system and you can make it work. Like I think Wolves are trying to now. That's why I think Wolves are having a bit of a, a tough start to the season because I think they've changed the way they play. Yeah, so they if they can adapt to that and make it work, I think it could be a good formation to, to push on and they could become, you know, because they last season they start they struggled to start. I mean, they've started a bit better this season, but, mm. you know, they've still been a bit inconsistent. But if they can actually get better... Um, and develop the formation fair enough but going back to the game Tottenham West Ham, uh, West Ham. The, way you, the way it is you can't really discredit West Ham from all this I know obviously t- we can complain about West Tottenham's defence and, and all that sort of stuff but West Ham West Ham have been on some good form you know I know, really that, wrong. I know well, obviously, I was we, 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 we I mean, cited them in, in our last podcast about the transfers and mm-hmm. behind the scenes at the club but it seems like they've, they're listening to us and obviously they're like oh they don't know shit so we're gonna rally round, and then they've sorted themselves out. And obviously, oh. they are. They're getting. They're getting wins. They're getting. They're getting good points against the teams like Tottenham. It's, mm. It seems like it's, it's going well for them at the moment. Moisey seems. To, I think they all seem to be on the same side as the manager. The, they all seem to be on the same uh, wavelength. So I think it's working. It seems so like Ben Rama, um, the other ben day. Rama, so yeah, he's a quality for. player. I mean, he's a potential like Dimitri Payet. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And also, like, the, the, it seems like Thomas Suchek's going to be um, a big part of their midfield as well because he, he had a, he had quite a good game. West Ham's mouth on for Lady. Yeah, that's what Mourinho said in his pre- Yeah, it was, it was good that was. I mean, is that a good thing? I don't know. What, what, what I mean, well, you, you forget that Fellaini was it was quality for Everton. It was quality. Yeah, 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 so that's yeah. why he brought him over. That's where he played his best football, I think. Fellaini, no. not not really Man United or anything. Oh, no. but, he did a job. I mean, no. don't wrong. He had his moments at Man United. He, he, oh, yeah, he got yeah. us a few points. Don't get wrong. You know, he, he could be effective. He's got the he, wasn't a pretty, he wasn't a pretty player, but he was a. a he could it's be very toxic, toxic kind of football, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But um, very, yeah, very, so, very, negative, very negative. Obviously, exactly. a bad result for Spurs. You know, to three 0 and drop it like that. But yeah, they need to. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you. They, I'll get you. They need. I, I mean. Everyone was probably getting excited for Spurs. Oh, we could challenge for the league this season and stuff like that. I, mean, I think anyone knows they're going to challenge for the league this exactly. season. So then, so no, my no. statement there could I could all the Spurs fans could point at the end of the season and go, "You're talking crap." But you know, I don't think they're going to win the league. So I think defensively, I think really. I think once Bale's fit and like once he him him can and Son are all like in in that setup there in the front three, that will be yeah. quite that be a scary front three. Oh yeah. Time. I agree, there's, but, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of pressure on Gareth Bale, though. Like yeah, but he came on. His, his, his thought, he, he almost scored. Possibly, yeah. Mate, but, maybe. He, but he thought he thought off so highly um, at Spurs. Like, oh, yeah. I think that I think they expect him to pull off um, the numbers he pulled off in his last season for Spurs. And for me, like he hasn't played a lot of football with um, under Round Kivery um, when he was there. So he's, he's, he's going to take a yeah, really long yeah. time to get. Um, to get fit, so he's either been injured or he's been like, like not been used by Zidane. So that that like, it's it's not really helped his career, and he seems to have stagnated exactly. really. Yeah, I get. No, yeah. I wouldn't expect too much from him. Like I think people don't expect him to just um come in and be like an automatic star for Spurs. But I think the two main stars for Spurs at the moment are the two players that have been there for a while now, and that's Harry Kane and Son. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't. I don't see Bale making as big as an impact for Spurs. Um, I mean, Bale's quality is still there, but it's whether or not he can he can build that up to how it, how, it, how it used to be and get his confidence back. Because obviously mm. he's not he's lost his confidence. He's, yeah. he's probably lost his will to play since since the Madrid. So we're, I mean, we're, we'll probably going, we're probably going a bit over with this subject. But anyway, that's... Do you want to go through um, Man United Newcastle? Get that out of the way. So because we'll leave Liverpool to last, I think. But yeah, um, yeah I think. When I initially saw my phone when Luke Shaw scored down goal, I thought, for fuck's sake, here we go again. Oh, yeah. um, but the response, the, football. the performance was good. They played some good football, um, but I'm worried about the next three games because we've got Very PSG, worried. Chelsea and Arsenal. So I'm a bit worried. We could, we, could either, we, could, we could go to PSG and get battered or we could come away with a win. Or I really, what's can you? What's your um? 
thoughts on Van der Beek for United? Well, I think when he's come on, he's been effective. He's played well. I think he's played really well. And I think he will get his chance soon. Because he came on against Newcastle and he played. He didn't give the ball away once. He's a really good player. Technically, he's good. He's box to box. You know, but to get the team that he played on Saturday, we played really well. You know, with James, McTominay, Bread, they all stepped up. Van der Matter as well. Matter. Matter was class. And I've, I've been quite critical of him and been going, oh, he's, he's past his best now. But he's showing glimpses at the moment of like his old, older self. Because, because he's, he's been used when he's needed and that's what that's what you need from yeah. your older players. You but use them when they're needed. I can see I could see Van der Beek starting tomorrow. I think I personally. Does. I hope he does. I'd like to see him Let me slow to introduce Van der Beek because I thought he'd start it straight away. Like I think midfield. Because I think the problem with Van... go on, go on, go on. Oh, okay. But the reason why I think he started slowly because first we've got Bruno Fernandez as a camp. And the effect he's had on the team has been well phenomenal. Van der Beek, he's a cam as well, probably by nature. Probably he's yeah. more of a cam. Obviously, you can't really drop Fernandez because of how good he's been. So Van der Beek's mm. not had to have minimal game time because he's played what sixty minutes in the Premier League this season, so it's not great. But I think he'll get his chance. Yeah, I, I think the reason, like arguably, should be starting on a pop there, but. I understand there's like contract talks going on with Pogba at the moment and like Man United don't want to upset him and like yeah. drop him. I mean, it should be but dropped. He was dropped and the weekend, wasn't he? He was dropped, but probably because he, he said he was injured. Tomorrow. But I still think with Pogba, I think the only reason why he hasn't been performing at his best because I think people really need to remember he was positive with the coronavirus. And obviously you can't go from having the virus to... Playing a ten out of ten the next game against um, all yeah. these teams. He has had a break. He's got a, he, he needs to break on, out the side. I'd, I'd say that it depends on the mentality of the player. Sometimes, it's, uh, not not obviously not not every player is going to like think the same way when they come back from that sort of thing. But mm. I don't know because I mean, I'll, I'll get on to him later because the, the um, Tiago's I think was a completely different option for that because he, mm. he not he came back from the virus and he, he played. A, Man of the match performance against Everton. But, well, but, we'll, 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 we'll carry that on. We'll carry that on. Go on. You can. But I think just to touch on Newcastle, because obviously Newcastle, I think, you know, concede to be 1 1 in the 86th minute and then to concede three goals in the space of 10 minutes, I think it's quite poor from them. I think if I usually, I, I think in that, in those type of games, yeah, you, you want to try and win it, but ultimately, you need to. You, you, they probably should have played for a draw, or probably been a bit more defensive because they were just mm. so open. Like the, the amount of times we cut through them, even when it was one all, which it was like, what are they like? What are they doing? It's not Steve Bruce like. So I was surprised they didn't settle for a draw. And well, to be fair, they ended up losing four one. But United you know, deserve to win the game. They play well, and hopefully they can carry on. Bit of kick a bit on a bit of form, but I won't say any more about it. Now that that's that's following. Mm. Okay, so we've covered Newcastle then, so we'll move on to... Um, we haven't done City Chelsea. Arsenal. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, we'll, 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 go, we'll, go, we'll go up now. So Man City Arsenal, so City won 1-0 in, that, in the, probably the biggest game this week. It was a pretty that close was... game from what I saw, but City were probably the better side, but Arsenal had a few moments. And I think to be fair, Arsenal are showing progression now under Arteta because if that was under good. Emery... I think he would have lost to Liverpool a couple of weeks ago, like four or five one, and they probably would have lost to City like three four nil. So although they yes, they are still losing, but they are not heavily better. on the injury too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, not but, even and the, their record against the big six teams, allegedly big six, is bad away from home. But I've got a feeling next weekend when they play Man United or the week when they play Man United away, I believe they'll beat us personally. I really do. I can see the beating us. I think we're going to struggle against the top six teams this season. Mm. I, mean, I mean, like Man City, obviously Man City have had their slow start to the season. But, I mean, how how do you think City are doing at the moment? Are, are they, do you think that you seem like you see a recovery think, from them all? I think they yeah, do. So City have got their frailties at the end of the day. And mm-hmm. they've still got the defensive frailties that bad last season, the season before that, and I haven't properly yeah. invested in the right positions. So, well, uh, 
you can't you can't write this season because everyone's no one's been stand out obviously besides Everton but no one's been to stand out like with continuous continuously like proving like that they've got a quality side with the, I think with City the will only six. City will only get that I think their partnership at the back with Ruben Diaz and Laporte I think it's a really good partnership I think they've got the, the potential to be a really good partnership. The one thing I do worry about also is just their full back positions, the full backs again. It's another it's a, the thing is what we are another recurring theme, I think, for another team. They've got good centre half partnership, but just you know, full back wise, they're just not good enough. But yeah, um that's probably it wasn't the best of games, it was a decent game. But yeah, I'd say in the end, City deserve to win that one. Okay, so we next we move on to Chelsea Southampton, which was another three three. Um, Chelsea obviously started the better team. Obviously, Timo Werner got his first few goals for Chelsea, which was a long time. Well, it felt like a long time coming because you, you think he's of his potential, he'd been banging him in by now. But so obviously, it takes a bit longer for him. And obviously, Kai Havertz scored his first. But then Southampton obviously um, ultimately got the draw in the end. Danny Ings with two goals and. Um, Yannick Vestergaard, of all people, getting the last minute equaliser. Mm. What do we think? Try Adam score, George. It was Danny oh, Ray, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, was, I, was, I remember you said it was Ings twice, but it was actually Adams. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, what do we think? I just think Chelsea just fly out, fly out the back like a lot of teams are this season. It's, it's the like, same story. Yeah. Same story with everyone. I mean, like, it's the same story with everyone. I'm surprised yeah. that um, Kep was still playing in goal for Chelsea. I mean, obviously the Mendy side... was injured. Mendy was injured. Oh, was he still injured? I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously, it, it shows how much they've needed him. Then, if um, the still Kep is still conceding three to Southampton, I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, obviously, uh, Chelsea signed all these players. Obviously, we mentioned this last week in the transfer podcast, but Me too. obviously, the team lack of defender really. I mean, not really gonna. Oshel the defence at thirty five, is he really? Exactly. So, I mean, can I can I can I just say Yeah yeah. Go on. There's been a goal at Edward. Okay, well, so I'll I've just said nothing then. Go on. Go on. Yeah, I agree. Chelsea, I've said it before. You ain't gonna be nothing with that defence. Yeah. Simple as I don't know. I mean, also we, we talk about Southampton as well. They've um, they've done. They've, they've seems to they had a bit of a slow start to the season, but it seems like they're now starting to find their rhythm again. And Danny Ings is obviously scoring for fun, uh, and it's 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 an interesting thing because obviously Danny, we, we, I I I've made, I've made no secret of my love for Danny Ings. I, I wish he'd have done this at Liverpool, and obviously yeah, quality striker. I know he's he's, he's, had his, he's had his injury issues, but I think he's finally found his club. Exactly, exactly right. I but he, he, I, he think, needs, I, think like a I think he's one of the top five best strikers in the league. I agree. He's definitely you've got definitely top you've got, ten. There's no doubt about that. If top ten. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Top five is a bit. Top ten, definitely. Top. Think 10, about definitely. though, Kingy. You got okay. Think of strikers top ten better than him. So you've got Harry Kane, Kane. Abamyang, Aguero. Aguero. For me, for me I know. I know. I know. Everyone says for me, knows all of this. It, 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 anyway, but I've put Firmino up there. Maybe Jimenez as well. Um, I talked about Firmino when you talked about it before. Anyway, well. But anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that team and we'll go on to the, the final big game. On, I'll have, uh, on, 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 because this is this game angered me. I mean, it, for, for me, obviously it was the big game of the weekend. Obviously the, the local derby. Mm. Me, King, you know, Mr Pochettino watched it, but remember we went out the other day. In the crown, uh, yeah, in the crown in Bridge North. Social distance, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Um, of course. Kingy and Adam found it hilarious, as though as you'd think. But uh, honestly, mate, I was seething. I was absolutely seething in that game. It was two, cool. Obviously, for two reasons. One, for, for the Pickford challenge on Van Dyke, which was. Which if that if that happened, okay, if that happened in real life in the street, he'd have been arrested for assault. Okay, Brennan. I've seen a lot. Wait, wait. Okay, so if a boxer, so a boxer's boxing someone, you could say, oh, if you do that in the street, if you do that in the street, someone and to knock them out. The whole point of football is to score goals, not to cripple your opponent. 
I'm he, sorry. He, I think a lot. I, I've seen. He, I've, I've seen that comment from a lot of Liverpool fans uh, on Twitter. I think it's. I Is think it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, it's absolutely no, ridiculous. If if he did that in the he, middle of us, why no. would he? Why would he be doing that in the middle of the street, Bennett? <laughs> why would he? Why would, was, he, was, why would he be starfishing? That, um, t- that bad of a challenge. It could have been classed as assault. That's what. That's what I'm going for with this. And the did he mean it? Hang on, shut up. He's done this before. He did it against. Did he mean it? I think I think he might have to try. Oh, whatever. He did. He, 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 whatever. He, hang on. Also, I found this out as well a couple of years back. He did the same to Delhi Ali, but he got away. Luckily, Ali wasn't injured from it. I don't think he did it on purpose. I think he's a he's a crap I think, goalkeeper. I think, I think, I think <laughs> he's trying to make a name for himself to try and get try and make. That try is and, so uh, ridiculous. He's trying, to make, he's trying to make Everton. He's trying to tell the Liverpool players, "We're not afraid of you. We're gonna we're gonna do whatever we can to put you off your game. And if that means injuring you, then so be it." Because Richarlison did the exact same thing to Thiago, and he got Richarlison's a Richarlison's a different story. That was intent. I don't think I don't think Pickford went out of his way to let um, Van Dyke be out for the whole season. I don't no, think I, he did that. I, 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 I don't care. Well, That's my opinion. Whether it. if it was intent or not, it should have been red carded. Of that's course. Well, I'll say. That's, yeah, that's, that's the story. story. They've, let him off. They've, let, they've actually let him off from it, and that's that's the worst thing. Van Dyke's now but, um, the season, and then now it looks like Pickford's got away with it. That, that's just great, that is. Mm. I mean, anyway, we'll, we'll, you have to buy a cent- you have to buy a centre off and. Uh, January. Yeah, I think we'll have to. Yeah, that's the. But then we'll move on to the the next contentious point, which was the offside. Obviously, Henderson put the ball in the back of the net, but it was a judge to be offside when it clearly wasn't offside. He was on. He was on in on line with the defender. But obviously, then you'll get you'll get rival fans going. Oh, Liverpool! Or it's it's been coming for a long time. Or it's always benefited them. VAR, Liverpool, and all that crap. But then now, they know how we feel. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. I don't know hear it. You've had that many Bennett. penalties last season. You had that many penalties exactly. last Exactly. Exactly. Benefited you. Huh? Benefited you more than anything because you've had that many, had that many penalties last Bennett. season. Every penalty that we've had, we've deserved. Bar one. Don't talk to me about penalties. I don't know hear it. Everyone bar one. This isn't the Man United podcast. This is now bench podcast with Liverpool. I'm, I'm honestly, it was it was an absolute joke of a performance. I mean, from the referee. Actually, no, no, sorry, more from VAR. And well, like I know, obviously, there's been a lot of problems with VAR in the past. Obviously, a lot of teams, like Wolves, for example, they've had their fair share of issues with it. But it's mm. I, I, for a long time, even before the, the things that happened with Marne and with the game, in, with that game in general, VAR it needs it needs a lot of work badly because things like that make football it just, it's, not, it's not enjoyable. Because every, every, because what it is now, when you see a team score a goal now, you're now waiting for some guy in, in a box up in like in up in the heavens or in London or whatever, where Stockley Park, that's it. And like he, he's now gonna decide basically if it's a goal or not. And obviously he's gotta look at the rule book and go, Oh, any little part of the body's now counts as offside, even like the elbow or the foot. How can you how can you like how can you monitor that as a as a player when you're trying to score a goal? It's it, it's virtually impossible. I don't, know, I don't know what you two think about it, but, you know. I think it should have created as a goal, because I don't, but, you know, because I don't personally think it was offside. I just think the line was jagged, personally. But. He was right on side. He was, he was alongside him. He was right alongside I know, him. Yeah, oh, I, I, I just think it's a bit cruel, because I also think they they probably mess around with the, the line as well. I just think it should have been counted as a goal. But, um, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it the, I think at the end of the day, they could have won it, but I think uh, in the... I think a draw was a fair result. No, it wasn't. But, um, no, we, 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 I think we deserve to win that game. The way, okay, defensively, we're a bit shoddy. I mean, obviously, we had Adrian in goal instead of Allison, which obviously is going to be a step down from him. And he's, he's not really, he's not really been looked at in a positive light by Liverpool fans because of the seven-two at Villa. But and also just help, also just help. Obviously, you got Van Dijk going off injured quite early on, and now look, I, problem. I believe I still think it was a good reaction for Liverpool, but to to the defeat they had, and they got a. Oh, yeah, end of the definitely. day, they got a, they, end of the day, it's a decent point against a team that's doing well. So, ultimately, Liverpool, what we've got to do is they've just got to try and get a good run of form. Maybe now, I, I, I don't know if we could do it, maybe be a bit more 
worried about defensively because obviously you've lost two key players, so maybe you might have to bit change a bit of your tactics of games. So be a bit more, um, be a bit more boring. And well, look, why I say that luckily, because, luckily for, um, um, as of the news hearing now, it seems Allison's on the road to recovery. Whether or not he'll play, like. I don't think he'll play against Ajax, but the game at Sheffield United, who knows what will happen? Because yeah, seems... the thing is, you should be then. And that's and then, like, obviously, we, we and obviously, we look at some individual performances. You've got Thiago, who honestly, he's honest, he's so brilliant. He's brilliant. He, he, I can't. I'm, tr- I'm struggling for words to describe him because he, he was that good against Everton. His mm. passing's just on point all but, the yeah, time. It's it was a he did he is a good like, signing, but. Like, but you've been surrounded off. I think Everton have done started well. Obviously, they were very dirty in the last game, and you know probably should have had one or two. You know what? Sent off, but you know what? Though? I suppose it the day. I'm glad they were. I'm glad they were dirty. That's a derby at the what? end of the day. I want passion. Yeah, but it doesn't start. Yeah, honestly, yeah, no. I'm sorry. There's, there's been. I'm sorry. There's been physical, Liverpool fans been when it comes physical. to Everton. But Liverpool fans, when it comes to Everton, they're so cocky. It's because the, they, hang on, it's a it's local derby. It's, exactly. So and you know what uh, it is. And you, hang on, you know what and you know what it is as well. It's one of those derbies where like like families can be affected by it because obviously Liverpool Liverpool and Everton. It's a weird derby because a lot of like the fans that support them obviously they come from the same family or the the close mates. But one of the it's one of the few like derbies where. Like in a crowd, you can actually sit with Everton fans because obviously it, uh, it, it's a weird, it, it's a, like a thing like it's more of a family, like derby type thing. Mm. But, but Benny, it, it, honestly, it's a banter. I think I think Liverpool fans are about this result because they're, they're actually coming to terms that this Everton side um, might actually do things this season, mm. and I think I think Liverpool fans are a bit bitter. With no, well, oh, hang on. I think we have a right to be bitter about it. Is it injured two of our? They injured two of our players. Well, yeah, I think it's. I think that we probably just calm yeah. down. And just probably just think it's a bit of an end because we have done with this for a while. There's been, hang on, there's been passionate, but then there's been like downright, like just like like just just scummy, and that that was just scummy from from both Pickford and Richarlison. I don't, so, I don't, I don't, I don't like think that the challenges were right, but you know what. I'm glad that Everton, I finally um, took a stance to Liverpool because Liverpool, Liverpool treat Everton like there's some, like some little, yeah. like little brother. Liverpool, yeah. we, Liverpool. We, are, we are the better team in Liverpool. Liverpool I know you are though, but I think, I think Everton right. stood up for themselves on the weekend and I'm glad they did. Doesn't matter, even without Van Dijk, Liverpool will still finish out of Everton because Everton's goalkeeper, Jordan Pickford, is shit. That's the end of it. That's only that's that's, that's only way to make a name for himself for Jordan Pickford to, to injure a player because his goalkeeper yeah. is that shocking. Like, I don't know how he's in, how the fuck how the, not, hell is, I, how the hell is England's number one? I don't know because he's crap and got, he won't win anything for you Everton. Got Nick Pope and Dean Henderson there ready for you who are considerably better than him, especially Dean Henderson as well. But like. They continue to play Pickford. I don't know why, but whatever. It's okay, I hasn't got a clue, but that's enough of that. Anyway. At the end of the day, Everton are still, I've, I've not beaten Liverpool in a Merseyside derby for, I, I, I don't know how long now. This season? I think they will. They haven't won at Anfield yeah. since, like, since the 90s and they haven't, um, they haven't been, been in like 10, something daft like that. That's enough. Right, I'm going to calm down now because that that it's probably me. it's probably best to just cool down and end it off. No, I need light. Have a cup of tea and just call it off. So, George, take it away. Right, right. So that's the end of obviously the Premier League fixtures. Let, obviously, let us know in the comments what you what you thought of the fixtures and obviously, also obviously Wolves and um, Leeds are still playing at the moment. So obviously, when that comes through, obviously you can give your your thoughts about that in the comments too. One nil, no, still, still yeah. one nil. No. Right in the scores, even though it'll be out by the time the score we've begun, we finished by the time. The <laughs> yeah. oh, well, anyway, let us know in the comments if you think um, Pickford's challenge was um, intentional or not. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, right. go on, let George finish. So it seems like we're going to be ending the podcast now. I mean, I could I could talk for ages about it, but we'll, we'll leave it now before I literally blow up. Um, <laughs> so, 
anyway, like and subscribe, obviously, as, as you would normally. Uh, Spotify, we, we putting this on Spotify, Ethan, or? Yeah, I'll try my best. <laughs> I mean, we've been sucking a bit, but we'll try and get them back on, on there, obviously on, on Spotify. It, it's, it's another way of listening to the podcast, and we feel it's, it, it can be better for some people to do that. But anyway, it's goodbye from Ethan. Goodbye, guys. Bye-bye. It's goodbye from Alex King. See you later, guys. It's goodbye from me, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. So uh... Good evening, everybody. A pleasure and a privilege, as always, to be at Anfield, where we are hoping for another miracle like Istanbul. Shakiri in his own half, holds it square towards Matin. Mitchell,